Hey guys, welcome to uh, another Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Uh, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, thanks for tuning in wherever you are around the world. Um, Rob from uh, Cigar Federation here with you as always. And we've got uh, Logan um, co-piloting the, uh, the the War Eagle. Which, what's college's War Eagle? Dude, that's Auburn, bro. Is it? Yeah, Roll Tide, War Eagle. You're not seeing that 30 for 30? It's pretty they, epic. They, they pay all their uh, athletes, right? Yeah, man. Everyone in the SEC pays their athletes, including okay. my alma mater. So we got that all squared away. That's good. Yeah, yeah Logan, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Um, getting ready to travel here for work and see our, our guest actually tomorrow, which will be fun. Uh, but other than that, man, life life is just, just peachy. Just peachy. How's the pregnancy coming along? We've taken a turn from crazy town to just moderately crazy town. We've had an That's understanding. Good. Yeah, 90 more days, man. I'll be a dad. Oof. May God have mercy. <laughs> well, that's that's good. I'm glad that things are uh, are, are calming down on that front. Uh, we you you've started giving those updates, and so now I figured uh, we got to keep going with it. So yeah, why not? Um, anyway, joining us today, we've got uh, one of our favorites, John Huber of uh, Crown Heads. John, thanks for taking the time, man. Thank you. You guys are one of my favorites, too. Oh, look at that. It's a love fest. I it love is. It. Group hug. Group hug. And Logan, you don't look like you even passed your first trimester, actually. I, the, the weight's all... You, you must be carrying a boy, because it's all, like, right there. So, I mean... But you yeah, look dude. Good, man. Man, I've skin tone. Weight. I've gained some sympathy weight, man. I've been playing that thing hard. Really? <laughs> Yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> That's hey, what he's calling it. That's what I'm calling it. Hey, let me ask you a question. Are you going to find out if it's a boy or a girl? It's a girl. It is a girl. You know already. Yeah, we know. We were thinking about not doing it, but apparently the new trend is this gender revealing party. I don't know yeah. if you know anything about this, no, dude. but it drives you chicks nuts. And it just so <laughs> happens that like literally five of our friends, they're all around the same age. Literally one is having a baby last month and then Three of us are having babies in August or in in July, and then two are having in August. Like it's crazy, but yeah. So it's like this big thing. You're like, oh, I'm having a girl, yay! Do, do then, we have a name picked out for said girl? Well, <laughs> not to derail, John, but I what? made the mistake of telling people what the name was yeah. with an episode we had two weeks ago, and I won't mention their names: Danny Moya and Nelson Cruz, jerks, oh. and they mocked the name. What and was it the kind name? of? Come on, I'm a, I'm a sensitive guy. I'll, I'll, yeah. Well, I know you are, Huber. I, I mean, I'll tell you. I'm, here's what we're thinking. We're thinking, the first one I don't know, I'm not so sold on anymore, but the yeah. first one was Callaway. Callaway, like the golf club? Yeah, there you go. Um, but spelled like trendy with like an, an I or something. And you got a umlaut in there? Yeah, and call her like Got Callie it. or Callie for short. And then okay. the second name, which I'm, I think I'm, I'm sold on, is Harper. Harper. I like Harper. I like Harper. Harper's good. There you go. Harper, Harper Lee was an author, right? What'd yeah, she write? To Kill a Mockingbird. There you go, To Kill a Mockingbird. One of my favorite books. Right. Great. That's from that's from your area too, isn't it, Logan? In Texas. I don't know. I don't know. The, the middle no. of the country to me is all just one place. Big. That just goes to show how ignorant you are. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it really hey, is hey, true. I got an idea. <clears throat> what if you named her J.D. Howard? What is if I called her J.D. Hey. Hideout's girlfriend? Oh, hey, I'll give you, I'll give you a box of cigars if you name her J.D. Howard. Just how a box. That? Just how, about a, how about a pallet, bro? Just a box. <laughs> so, okay, before right. we get too far derailed, two things. Um, uh, John, you wanted to do – we didn't talk about this offline, but you sent an email. Do you want to do that uh, that Twitter thing sure, during the show? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and announce that to everybody right now? Me? Yeah. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> I'm so kidding. You, All right, you, here, here's remember. the thing. All right, so let's do this. Since you guys wanted to do something special – uh, for everybody watching this, and this goes to what the Armed Force Network. Yeah, yep. but this this contest first, first will be gone by the time they hear it. So guys Sorry, like guys. in service are doing this, they're watching this around the world. I, if that's the case, I just want to say thank you for your service, honestly, and from the bottom of our hearts, because I don't have one tenth of the guts uh, that you guys do to do what you do. So I have utmost admiration and appreciation for all of you watching this right now. So. That being said, we're at 3,066 followers. If we get to 3,100 by the end of the show tonight, then uh, you guys, meaning Manbeard and Robbie, will uh, pick out one follower, listener, whatever, and we'll send a three-pack, pre-release three-pack of Las Calaveras and a, uh, a Crowned Heads hat to lucky winner. So how about that? 
Cool. So Very cool. Follow so, at the crowned heads, or I would be remiss not to say, or you could follow at Mike Condor, M I K E C O N D E R, Mike Condor. Yeah, he's sensitive about followers, man. Extremely. I would follow mine too. Extremely, extremely. Sometimes I, I would just unfollow him just to make him sad because he'll, he'll notice that one guy dropped off. So I can mess with him a little bit. But anyway. So, so uh, let's, yeah. I see a couple of guys in the chat room. If you guys already follow uh, Crowned Heads, mm -hmm. go, ahead and, go ahead and tweet out about the contest. Get your friends to follow them. They'll do the work for you, and you guys still get a chance to win. You get, you get to. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're, if you're already following, you can still get involved. Um, the next thing, Logan, and we're about five minutes late in saying this, this first segment's brought to us by who? Uh, first segment is brought to us by our friends at uh, Drew Estate Cigar Company. Um, we have a very special contest that we're running for our listeners um, on AFRN. If you go to drewestate.com backslash AFRN, um, they're running a special contest for us um, where you can win a limited edition, um, or I guess a limited production, I guess, acid humidor or acid collector's tin as well as one of their army hats so get in it's using uh, very easy to enter tell your friends spread the word only for AFRN check it out at drewestate.com backslash AFRN back to you Roberto cool um, okay so we got that stuff out of the way <clears throat> um, we just so been talking about nothing this entire time and we're already like halfway through show. the first we'll segment talk, I love you John you're we'll the talk best about girls names for about 20 minutes and then we'll, we'll talk about like you know Nothing. And then at the very end of the show, you'll say, what do you guys got coming out new? And I'll say, I can't tell you. Great. Thanks for being here. And I had a good time. And there it is. There's the show. So if anybody wants to tune off now, that's basically that the show was encapsulated right there in 30 seconds. You don't have to watch anymore. So adios. <laughs> Cheers. Wow. <laughs> I feel like the, the entire show just got a big nut kick. There it and is. With that, <laughs> and with that, I'll no, see right. you guys next week. Okay. <laughs> I'm Logan and I'm Robbie, and we'll see you next week on Cigar Federation. Well, I'm demoralized. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this cigar out and take the hat off. I love the hat, man. You won't. No, this that. is my favorite hat. Oh, gee, okay. that's the original. That's yeah. the original hat. Yeah. This one's legit. I appreciate that you actually wore that hat, as opposed to some people that you know didn't wear any kind of crown heads related paraphernalia, unless. The, Except for the beard, I guess. Anyway. Hey, listen, John, you don't know your demographic. You make your shirts too small for fat people like me. Dude, I got <laughs> dude, I got that guy with the crutch, man. He's like all stretched out across my chest. It looks like it he's like like crutch. It's like he's got a twirling baton because that thing's just like holding on for dear life. It's like stretched <laughs> out and it's like good. It's all messed up. It's all right. That's why we don't do many t shirts anymore. There's a lot yeah. of ass. So anyway. <laughs> I've seen Logan in that shirt. It's it's not. That's it's, uh, scary. I don't think I want to. It's scary, bro. It's, bro. it's scary. It's bad times. Uh, uh, so we still got a few minutes in this first segment. So we're we talking about tonight. Let's, let's, yeah, let's get into about? cigars or something. No, I'm gonna I'm just gonna start going down some of the audience questions here, and then I know we've got some uh, some interesting news we want to share with you guys later. Uh, mm. But we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. Uh, let's just start going down the list. Uh, this one's from uh, Miguel Roca. Uh, he says, first off, thank you for, for making uh, some, I'll paraphrase, very good cigars. Um, <clears throat> keep up the good work. He says, uh, uh, any word on, on the merchandise store that you guys are launching? I think it's going to be an online-based store. So you have any, uh, any updates on that? Well, first of all, uh, thank you, Miguel, for your comments. But just to get, be clear, the, it's John Huber on the show, not Pete Johnson. So if you're confusing me and his swag and his cigars, I, I apologize. Um, <laughs> But anyway, that was that was nice of you to say. So, uh, are we um, doing a swag store? Are we doing yeah. a swag store? I, yeah, but I don't think I want to call it swag. I don't know. There's, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna do an online store. Honestly, um, it wasn't at the, uh, the forefront, top of the bucket list of things to do, or what have you. It was more or less just to establish a value on merchandise, apparel what have you, that we send to retailers so they can use it for promotional events. Because quite honestly, we give away a lot, you know, most most of the stuff we give it away. We don't, we're not really planning on selling a whole bunch, but if anybody wants to spend their hard-earned money on a, a four kicks hat or a limited edition poster, what have you, then they'll have the opportunity to do so probably in the next, maybe in the next week, actually. Oh, well, okay. We're really close, so... You know, cool. we wanted we wanted to do a little different. We're 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 not going to run the same thing over and over and just have like one T-shirt that you know. We do uh, limited runs, limited productions of everything. Never repeat the same design twice, the same poster twice, the same hat twice. So it's always going to be 
you know, truly a, a collector's item, I suppose. So. Very cool. Now, is that going to be <clears throat> is that going to be its own website, or is just going to be through uh, Crownheads.com? It'll be through Crownheads. There'll be a, a link to something that says anything except swag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I never said swag. I said merch. Merch, swag. I mean, it's all been done, hasn't it? Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. I was. I really wanted to use. Uh, what was it? I wanted to use Palace Laundry, but that was cool. But um, the attorneys said no, as they're so prone to say lately. <laughs> Get a lot of no's. Too uh, too closely referenced to someone else's. Uh, What's the next question? <laughs> someone else's business. Um, next question. Uh, uh, same uh, from the same person. This was also from Miguel. He says, uh, "How is it working uh, with the folks at my I father, mean, uh, my father factory, um, on the new Lost Cal?" Again, not Pete Johnson. Not Pete Johnson. I have to be clear. I think you're the so, only one referencing I see how this is all going. Well, because he said good cigars, swag, and then my father. So I'm like, well, everybody's going to be confused here. But um, anyway. Um, Start if, talking about tattoos next. Well, I got, I got a few, actually. and I don't know. So I can make it even more confusing. Um, no, all jokes aside, he's been f fantastic to work with, with uh, the Garcia family. They've been just welcomed us with open arms. I mean, I have to go back a little bit and, and say that we actually started to go down that road in 2011 with them. And at, at that time, Mike and I just really felt that we needed to be into a factory that really where we can carve our own niche, our own identity, as opposed to being one of five, six, seven, eight different uh, brands that were going to be made there. So the timing wasn't right in 2011 to work with the Garcias. Um, but they were very kind and gracious enough to revisit that that initial meeting with us um, at the beginning of this year, and so it, it just we went down there and you know Jaime basically said this is a continuation of what we were talking about in April of '11, so you know looking forward to doing stuff, and uh, they we just picked up and became fast friends, and here we are. So um, it's been great. They're just some of the best people, you know, not just in terms of talent, and yes, they have the great tobaccos, and they made the number one cigar of the year, so on and so forth, but just on a personal level, they're just really kind, gracious, um, very humble people, considering how much they've accomplished and how quick of a time, you know, you would think that they'd have a bit of an ego, but it's not the case at all. They're just so, they're great. It's been wonderful. Very, I feel very lucky, feel blessed to be working with them. Yeah, it's it's uh it's nice to be able to work with someone who's at the top of their game, but uh, no matter who they're working with, they they treat everybody with respect oh, and uh, they're grounded. Um, yeah. Sometimes that can be hard to find. I you know knock on wood we've been uh, Mike and I have been very lucky. I mean working with Ernesto, he's the same way. I mean you know he's inducted into the Cigar Aficionado Hall of Fame. He's got 40 years in the industry. He's literally an icon, and you know we. I, it, he's almost, he really has become like a godfather to me, you know, and he's hes that sweet of a man and, and, and dear where like we saw him in Mexico uh, for the TAA and he came up and put his arm around my wife, gave her a big hug and we're just like family. I mean, it's just so, you know, you, to me, I, I find that when you get to that level, like Ernesto or Pepin, Jaime, Yanni, whatever, it just seems that the people are just very special. It's the guys that are like two or three or four clicks below <clears throat> that can be complete douchebags <laughs> because they think <laughs> because they think they're much higher up than the two or three four clicks below and they <laughs> take on a complete douchebag aura. But yeah, so anyway. Did you say douchebag aura? Yeah, is that is that not right? No, that's that's an awesome word. And we're no, gonna that's, that I, forever. I can I can picture exactly what you're talking about. We'll talk a little bit more about that aura on the other All side right. of this on the other side of this break. Do you guys have commercial breaks, like Tide and stuff like that, and like it, as soon as you shut up, oh, <laughs> five seconds of silence. Sorry, we didn't reference that before. <laughs> All right, welcome back to <laughs> oh, Cigar. You're a mess, bro. We're uh, we're uh, a broadcast uh, live on CigarFederation.com, uh, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are, taking some time out of your day to uh, hang out with us. Uh, we're here with uh, John Huber of uh, Crowned Heads uh, Cigars, we're talking about um, uh, the new Las Calaveras. Uh, Logan, this second segment brought to us by who? 
Second segment, Robert, is brought to us by our good friends at AmmoDoors.com. Um, check them out. It's really, really cool product, uh, really cool for military. They take, you know, 50 cal, 30 cal, uh, empty green shell casings, turn them into a humidor lining with Spanish cedar and all the accessories. A very cool conversation piece as well as keeping your cigars protected on the go. We actually have them in the Cigar Federation store, all SIGFED branded up. Check them out, AmmoDoors.com. Back to you, Roberto. You, know, you you say this every time. It's not shell. It's not ammo casings. It's not shell casings. They're ammo canisters. Dude, shell, thanks shell for casings. correcting me in front of 3.2 million people. You jerk. <laughs> shell shell casings are like we have the punch cutters that are shell casings. Okay, but well, we can move are, on now. Logan, ammo mistake and Logan apologize, so we can quit mocking uh, him now. Okay, so <clears throat> we uh, we've got a little bit. I'm just going to make our announcement now. We didn't really figure out how we were going to do this. But we'll talk about it now because we'll dedicate this segment. Or do you want to jump in, John? Go ahead. I just want to know what's in the Mizzou cup. It's a um, big cup. It's a huge cup, so I'm wondering what's in there. Well, and it's also not only Mizzou cup, but it's got a picture of my Labradoodle that says rough on uh, it. Yeah, yeah my wife sweet. made it. Whatever. That's, what I like, so. that's sweet. It's actually a tea, man. I'm quite the tea connoisseur. I'll actually bring you some tomorrow. Don't. I'll bring you some of my favorites. Yeah, I actually will. No, yeah. no, I'm not a tea guy. I'm not, not a big tea guy. Well, no. man, you go to yeah, India, but, and you got to drink hot drinks, so you don't want to get the the deli belly. Trust me, you'll like tea, bro. Oh yeah, that's a good story for the for the show. I know that one was played out, dude. But you and Condor about crap your pants that's, last time you heard it. That's like we're like little kids, like sitting around. And go tell us that story. Tell us the story about when you were in the deli. That'd be tell us tell us again. Tell us about that time you fell in the sewer. Yeah, exactly. That's great. It's, I mean, how could you not want to hear that story? We've covered it's a, a lot. Story. So. It's Maybe we'll uh, wonderful. We'll, we'll bring that one back out in a little bit. But um, anyway, so we've uh, we've got a bit of an announcement, and I'm just going to kind of wing it here. We don't really know. Uh, I didn't really come up with a way to say it. But uh, Cigar Chat and uh, Crowned Heads are going to partner up. Um, we're going to have a our, the first uh, Cigar Chat branded uh, cigar uh, is going to come out. It's going to be a uh, Crowned Heads blend. And we're targeting a release date of uh, later this year in September, hopefully. Um, more details to come on that. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions, we'll probably tell you that we can't answer them. But go ahead and post them up on the site, and we'll do the best we can to address uh, to address uh, those questions in regards to that that blend that we have coming up. Uh, John, you came up with the naming and everything. Um, why don't you uh, tell everybody what we're going to call it and a little bit of that information before, before we go there. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Let's tell them about the idea behind the cigar. We wanted to, just a little bit. The idea yeah, behind the cigar is we wanted to obviously bring, you know, boutique cigars and, and cigars that everyone loves and loves to smoke to to our listeners. And the concept behind it was to work with the guys like John, who have came on the show, been very gracious with us, but have drawn some inspiration from being around Rob or I or, you know, from Cigar Chat. And from that, John kind of came up with the concept of the cigar. And with that, I'll let John drop the name because he is a naming marketing genius. Well, you know, to that point, I thought that Manbeard would be an excellent name for a cigar. Um, and now that I see this, you know, right there on the screen, I think Manbeard is even more apropos. Or is it Neckbeard? Neckbeard. We could, neck, neck we could call it the Neckbeard. You can get pretty creative with the band on that. That'd be, no, they already got La Barba. La Barba's already out there, man. That's the beard cigar. But anyway. Yeah, that's uh, true. So Okay, so initially, to go back, when I started, we, we the three of us got on a phone call one day and, and spent about an hour on the phone kind of talking about this project, and they said, do you want to do it? I said, yeah, it sounds like fun. Let's just do something. And So I was trying to think of what we could do that really kind of encapsulated, instead of just saying the Cigar Federation, Cigar Chat, Cigar, by Crown Heads or something. I always like to do things a little bit uh differently. And so Rob being from California and the bearded wonder being from parts unknown sometimes or Texas <laughs> sometimes, whatever, came up with the, uh, I, I threw out Texacali. Texacali because it kind of, to me, it, obviously the, the, the merging of Texas, California, it also kind of evoked that kind of spicy flavor profile that I think we want to want to go for in this blend. And um, it, we had been using Texacali as a descriptive of a brand that we're coming out with um, in, uh, in July. Not that it's called Texacali, obviously, but 
I said, I just gotta have like this this vibe, like a Texacali vibe. And everybody's like going, What is Texacali? I said, you know, it's like that Southwest kind of a uh, you know, spicy Manuel suit with a bunch of cactuses on it and you know, whatever. It, it, I don't know, my mind. But anyway, so they, they actually bought into this name called Texacali and that's what it's gonna be called. So that's what we're running yeah. with. So, yeah, so that's that's kind of the, um, <clears throat> that's kind of the basic uh, the basic gist of uh, of you know what we're doing. We'll get more details will come out. We'll have a press release and all that. But we wanted to tell you guys. First I ain't writing no press release. I'm just gonna tell you guys right now. I don't write press. Yeah. Well, it's the, we'll we'll get you somebody to do it. Well, the 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 crowned heads PR firm can do that for us. Yeah, dude, Adam can do that. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no press releases now. Um, we'll uh, we'll have something we'll have something written up with some more information on it as as we get closer. But uh, like I was saying, uh, this uh, this cigar is really kind of dedicated to uh, to you, you guys, guys, you know, for supporting the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, so want to let you guys know first. Uh, that's uh, that's breaking news. We broke our own news, but that's uh, I mean, John, you go way back with the show before. I mean, you were one of like the second or third guests we had when we were still just a chat room, and it was that was it. And you had no idea how to navigate through it, and I was talking to you through it on the phone. And nothing's changed. <laughs> I, mean, I still, in fact, I did Stogie Four One One a couple weeks ago, and they were supposed to go on like at noon, and we went on at like twelve twenty-five because I couldn't figure out how to log on or something like that. And it sounds about right. Yeah, God bless. And Mike Williams had to walk me through it. I'm an idiot. So. <laughs> So but, yeah, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of our, our big news, Logan. You want to uh, you want to uh, add anything to that? No, nah, man. I'm just I'm excited to do the cigar. It's probably and yeah, I mean I'm just excited, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure John will probably lace mine with like arsenic or something so he can finally <laughs> kill me off once and for all. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. But no, I'm very excited. Look for that hopefully later this year. Um, but who knows? But yeah, it's gonna be very cool. We're very excited about it. No, it's fun because I, I feel like we kind of get to uh, to kind of launch the ship and christen it, and I'm sure because uh, other brands will come after us and do their renditions of, of a scar for you guys. So I'm I'm happy for you all, and it's fun for us to do it too. So yeah, and, uh, and our theoretical uh, <clears throat> idea was a cigar chat inspiration series. There you uh, go. As, as Logan touched on, uh, you know, different inspirations from things we talked about at the show. Logan was really pushing for the hideout. Cause that was something that he brought up from the show and. Uh, that we, got shot down real quick. We, we managed to we managed to talk him off that ledge, but uh, <laughs> uh, dude, that's still a great name, man. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about the about uh, the Texas Cali, let us know. Uh, post them up in the uh, in the uh, in the chat page there, and I'll uh, I'll do my best to answer it. But like I said, we don't have too much of the information right now. Work in uh, progress. Work in progress. Yeah, exactly. It's a work in progress. Um, I'm going to keep going down this list of questions. Logan, jump in whenever you want. Uh, with anything that you've got, uh, let me see here. So we, uh, so here's a question from from Jason Hill. You know, we talk about this kind of thing a lot, and I don't know if we ever asked you this particular question, John. But uh, he says, "What separates Crown Heads from the rest of the cigar industry? What makes you guys stand out? What makes us stand out? I'm not sure that we do stand out, and that's what I guess why we go to work every day, so we can try to eventually stand out. Um, you know, shoot." That's an actually a very good question, but to me, I think it's our philosophy towards the craft of making cigars that I think separates us from most people because we don't do things like everybody else does. Um, and I'm sure other guys would say the same thing. But I, I, I do see a lot of, of, of a trend towards, okay, here's the trend. Here's the hot thing to do. Let's jump on it and let's do it. I mean, you know, like Ernie did a Connecticut Shade cigar a couple of years ago, you know, New Wave Connecticut. Phenomenal cigar, and then I don't know if you remember, but like a, a bunch of people came out with the Connecticut cigar. All of a sudden, that was the trendy thing to do. You know, our six by sixties. Okay, let's let's do that. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's do a seven by seven. Let's do a seven by eighty. Let's. So there's a lot of that. Me too. And we've always, from day one, Mike and I have said we're just going to do things completely different. We're going to kind of almost be in a box, if you will, and just do things our way. And if people find that they like that, that's great. If they don't, you know, that's fine too. You don't have to buy it. But we don't really do things to satiate or satisfy or appease the market. Um, uh, we probably take a more, you know, less direct approach and try to do things differently. Like, for instance, Headley Grange. 
You know, I mean, there's some of the most obscure sizes I think you'll see. Some of the retailers say, well, they all look the same. There's, you know, here's a 5 and an eighth by 44. Here's a 5, five, five eighths by 46. Then you got a 5 by 48. Yeah, they're, they're very similar, but they're all blended differently for the Batola. They're all small. There's no 6 by 60s. There's no, you know, goofy, crazy, you know, Figurato sizes or anything like that. It's just straight up old school, traditional cigar making with our spin on it. And that's kind of what we are. That's what we're about. So if you like it, thank you for following us and thank you for supporting us. If you don't like it, you know, there's plenty of other stuff that's that's really good out there too. All right, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> here's another question. I don't know how much you can uh, you can get into this uh, with the with Las Calaveras coming out. That's more of a, a limited release. You know, it's going to be a limited yearly release. Mm. Uh, Shooter wants to know. He says, "Can we expect a, a new core line anytime soon? And what can you tell us about it?" Yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Shooter, you asked the question. I gave you an answer. Um, what I can tell you is that you will see a fourth regular production uh, release from Crown Heads, which will debut um, at the trade show in July, the IPCPR trade show. Um, we're on track to begin shipping immediately after the trade show. So the cigar has already been in production, packaging's been approved, we're, we're far ahead of the game on that one. Um, we probably won't make an official announcement to any of the details or specifics of the cigar for probably another, you know, four to six weeks. Try to just kind of keep that, you know, quiet for a while. But yeah, we're excited. So we'll have four. You know, the Tennessee three now becomes four. You'll have four kicks of the Grange, J.D. Howard Reserve, and so. And blank. The and, hideout. Blank. and blank. And blank. Yeah, hideout. Logan's hideout. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> exactly. Dude, absolutely. And you can hide out in my beard, man. It would be perfect. Like those scrambled eggs are right now. I see it. I know, man. I got food and I'll just, you know, come back later like a freaking monkey did. It's awesome. Nice, nice. That's so. preening. Is that what called? that's called? Yeah. I don't know why I know that. You're so know. weird, dude. You don't yeah. know anything. You know weird stuff like that. I, I do know a little bit. Uh, I, I do <sighs> know a little bit of weird stuff. I don't really know why. Um, okay, so this one's from Sherman. Mm. Um, so he says, uh, he says, when you're choosing, when you're working on a blend, he says, do you look for something that will appeal to a certain market, or, <clears throat> or do you look for something that will sep, or do you look for something that will separate you from everyone else? Neither. Um, I, I think what we look for, uh, I, I know what we look for, is something that hits our palate or hits our, you know, spot. Um, you know, and it, all the blends we've come up with to this point all are very different and unique from each other, and that will continue to be that way. We won't come up with something just for the sake of having something new or, you know, whatever. It's It's got to be, there's got to be a reason to do it before we do it. So, you know, like, for instance, you know, Four Kicks wanted something that tasted, you know, complex, rich, Cubanesque, but not overly powerful. I wanted something that a beginner can smoke or a seasoned enthusiast can smoke. Then fast forward to Hadley Grange, I wanted something more direct, more to the point, more structured, more intense to appeal to that smoker. JD, I wanted to throw in a little bit of sweetness into the pot. You know, so it, it's a constant evolution, but it all, always has to be something. That like when I smoke it, I go, this is it, man. This this is what you know. That's what I've been thinking about. And then I give it to Mike, you know, and, and whoever else. And then we just hopefully you know hang it up on the fridge for a couple weeks. And you come back and you go, okay, you, you got something. But I never go out intentionally to go. I want to do this for this segment, or I want to do this for this market, or whatever. It, it, it's always very selfish and very self-centered and very egotistical, the way we, we do product development, to be honest with you. This is a very honest answer. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get into a little bit more on the other side of this break. I think Logan froze up. Welcome back to uh, Cigar Chat, guys. Uh, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are. We're here with uh, John Huber of Crowned Head Cigars. Uh, Logan, last segment brought to us by who? Last segment is once again brought to our, by our friends at Drew Estate. Um, for all those guys listening out on AFRN, listen up. 
you got a chance to win some free cigars, go to drewestate.com backslash AFRN. Uh, fill out the contest there. You'll be entered to win a, a collector's tin of acid cigars as well as a military-style Drew Estate hat. Uh, it's only for AFRN, so tell your buddies, tell your pals, be in the military. Uh, don't need a military ID or have the honor system here, but check them out, Drew Estate, uh, drewestate.com backslash AFRN. Back to you, Roberto. Yeah, guys, we were able to get uh, Drew Estate on board to team up with Cigar Federation and uh, the AFRN to bring you this contest. So hopefully you guys go out there and get involved. It's uh, Drew Estate, D-R-E-W-E-S-T-A-T-E.com uh, backslash AFRN. Uh, so go check that out. <clears throat> okay, so we were just talking about uh, you know each of the blends. Um, I know you guys already know this, but since you know we, we do this because we love it, but everybody wants to try to make a little money too, um, all crowned heads... Uh, blends, you can find them at store.cigarfederation.com. If you can't find them at your local B&M, you can always come and get them from us. Um, we've got some uh, six-shooter samplers in there as well. We're also going to be doing our giveaway later uh, in the show, so uh, stick around for that. Uh, Logan, prepare yourself because you're picking all the winners. And Because uh, no. um, I, I tried to do it two weeks ago, and it was a disaster, so you, we're going to stick with you. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to... Uh, let's... Uh, well, okay, here's another question. This one's from Burlesque. Uh, he says, do you have any plans to follow up on another limited release of the Mule Kick? And I don't know if he means, are you going to bring the Mule Kick back, which I don't think that you can, or is he referencing, you know... back is gone, bro. Yeah, or, or is he referencing, you know, more uh, limited releases in the future? Um, we've kind of touched on it, but I'll let you yeah. answer it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Logan hit, already answered it, basically, but, um, yeah, there, there's... There will never be another mule kick because it was based on a finite amount of, of tobacco, and that you know going back to that question like what separates us from from other brands or whatever, it, I think another thing that separates us is just that we're, we're blatantly honest to to a fault. And when I tell you that you know we had this tobacco that it's only going to yield five thousand cigars and that's all we're making, that's all we're making. I think we made five thousand thirty four. And 34 of them we kept for the office and, you know, whatever. But it, we don't do a, a big shell game and try to, you know, fake it. We're, we're very honest and very to to the point about things. And so there, there will never be another meal kick. That was a one-and-done, truly limited edition. So if you got some, I hope you enjoy them. Um, I got three <clears throat> left. I have seven. I counted today. Excuse me, really? six or seven, yeah. And then... Uh, but yeah, no. Th later on this this year, there'll be a JD Howard. Uh, uh, this is kind of our tradition that every fourth quarter we started with Mule Kick for four kicks, and we did Drumstick for uh, Headley Grange, and so we'll do something for JD Howard Reserve. Um, I know what we're gonna do, but I can't say what we're gonna do. Hideout. It's not gonna be the hideout. Um, we're not gonna do that, bro. Not gonna <laughs> do that. Let it go. <laughs> it's over. I'll wear you down. Nah, it's cool. It's cool. I, I think eventually I'm just going to have to do it just for fun. I can't wait. The day you do, man, will be the day it'll hell be, freezes over. It'll be great. We'll do a ticker tape parade. Oh, dude, it'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. <laughs> Ta -da. But, dude, um, it'll be great. Yeah, so that's that's it. That's it. So, um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about the TAA cigar if we haven't covered it already. I don't think we have. TAA cigar is a cigar called the Angel's Anvil, which also, if you're smart, stands for TAA. TAA actually stands for Tobacco Association of America. If you're not familiar with them, they're comprised of about 60 some odd, maybe 70 stores across the country. You have to be invited to join. They're a very elite group of tobacconists, um, very good people, uh, great supporters of ours. We're fortunate. Uh, this is our second TAA show, so they asked us to do a, a limited edition cigar. Um, so rather than just do like Crown Heads TAA edition or Headley Grange, here's a new shape and we'll make it exclusive for the TAA, we really kind of carved an entire brand around TAA. So this is the Angel's Anvil TAA exclusive 2014. Uh, we made 20,000 cigars. They will be in 20-count um, boxes, 1,000. We sold them all out from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon in Mexico. So I was very happy about that. That's they a were, good day. That was a good day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, a good day. that's not bad to sell 20,000 cigars at your first time at bat with that. Um, they'll be shipping in June. It's a 7 and one eighth by 49 Churchill. Ecuador Albano wrapper. I went with the lower priming to make the shade a little bit lighter. 
um, all Nicaraguan binder and filler made by Ernesto Perez Carrillo, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, wanted to evoke a very classic kind of Cuban Churchill cigar, kind of the cigars that I smoked when I first got into cigar smoking back in you know, the 1990s, uh, 94, 95, you know, the old Romeo y Juliet, the Churchill, or, you know, Partagas Lusitania, all those kind of old school cigars. They weren't like overpowering, they weren't like big monsters, they weren't big ring gauges. It's a classic, easy to smoke, easy to appreciate cigar. And that is what we came up with with the Angel's Anvil. But you'll only, let me just say this, you'll only be able to find it at about 52 stores across the country. If you go to um, crownheads.com, on the front page, there's a, a list that if you click on it, it'll have all the uh, participating TA retail stores. Um, so good luck finding them. And, uh, if, they have a, if they have an online presence, will they be sold online or is it strictly sold only in the store itself? If they have an online presence, like for instance, Emerson's, Emerson's has I think six or seven brick and mortar shops, but they also have an online presence, so they'll be able to sell them online as well. What about Delaware Cigar? Delaware Cigar. They're not a TA. They're not a TA member, are they? I don't know, man. I'm asking you, man. <laughs> I'm I'm asking you. Like you're throwing me a curveball because I don't know Delaware Cigar. Gary Griffith. Gary Griffith. Gary Griffith. Uh, no, he doesn't have the Angels Anvil. Then you will not find it on Cigar Federation, people. Thank you very much. Please no. try again. No, you won't. Sorry. That's a, that's a shame. Well, you got, here's the thing. It, the TAA is so strict about that rule that even if you're a TAA member and you don't go to the show, you can't order it. Or if you're a TAA member and you're at the show and you order it and you sell out, you cannot reorder it again. It's a one-and-done thing. <laughs> you sell it that that day, that Wednesday afternoon, we were in Mexico, and from 9 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, that was the only chance we had as a manufacturer to sell it. So if we didn't sell out 20,000 cigars, I don't know what we would have done, but because <laughs> we had already gone into production on the final blend. So it's very strict as to who gets it, how you can sell it, how you can get it. So. All right. Well, I'll still find it, and I'll smoke it. That's all right. I'm sure you will. You'll be determined. I will be determined. <laughs> What else? All right. I want to uh, go down this. This is a uh, this is an interesting question. We've never I've never asked this one. I don't think uh, it's from Mike Weller, um, <clears throat> who's apparently a retailer, but I'm not sure what shop what his shop's called. Uh, he says, "I'm just wondering if you enjoy the production of a limited release product or the core lines more. So is, is it more? Is there more satisfaction in creating something that can't be reproduced, or would you rather end up something that's a bit more classic that will be available long term? Or do you distinguish between the two at all?" First of all, is this Mike Weller from Crossroads Cigar in Lafayette, Indiana? Uh, it could be. All right. So what was the question again? <laughs> How, I'm just amazing I hope, you hey, can Mike, do that. I hope the reason I said that, I, it's amazing because he had sent in a, an email said he was interested in carrying our cigars. So I, I remembered that, uh, to, I don't know, anyway, anyway. What was the question again? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I, I'm I was busy over here looking at my phone, seeing if I could find Mike Weller's uh, yeah, I was looking for his profile here, but I don't see it. Uh, so he wants to know, he says, anyway. do, do you find it more, uh, is it more exciting for you to blend a, uh, a limited release or a core line? Do you find more satisfaction in making something that's going to be just around for a limited time and then it's, it's a one and done type situation or something oh. that's going to have more longevity to it? Or do you distinguish think... between the two? I don't. I don't. I mean, you, you put your best foot forward no matter what. If it's going to be a limited release, it's limited because you have a finite amount of tobacco or you don't want, you, you, you know, financially you can't make this an, an ongoing project. So that's why it becomes limited. Uh, but, you know, you put your best foot forward and you, you, you get into everything. You don't just blend something because you, you're halfway into it. You know, it's like, I'm, and I get geeked out about every little thing we do, whether I'm doing you know, a thousand cigars for you guys for Texacali, or I'm doing seventy-two thousand cigars for Las Calaveras. I still get into it just as much. Get into all the different elements, of the the packaging, the marketing, the idea, the blend, the tobaccos. It, it's just that's that's what that's what gets me off, I guess. Um, so, but uh, I don't know. I, I probably could have phrased that a different way. In breaking news: Tobacco gets John Huber off. Listen, you know what? A wise man once told me, if you find something you love to do, you'll never have to work, work a day in your life. Absolutely true. 
This Absolutely. Is true. So I have yet, knock on wood, I have yet to wake up in the last, what is it, been 18 years I've been in this business and, and gone, oh, God, i got to go to work today. Oh, damn, i got to go to work today. Every day I wake up and I look forward to going in there and working with people and creating something different and getting a little bit better at the process. You can't ask for much more than that. So to pick between a, a limited edition and a core line, that's like trying to pick between uh, your kids, man. They're all, you know, you love them all. You, you put as much into all of them. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, Logan and I can attest to that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> just with the conversations that we had when we were talking about the Texacali and, you know, coming up with ideas and things. And uh -huh. um, I mean, John, you were real passionate about it. Uh, and this is, I mean, it's a small project. But you're not treating it like it's a small project, at least from you know from our, from our standpoint. I mean, you were bugging us on emails, and I mean, we had an email chain that you know went about uh, 25, 30 emails deep before I even got a chance to read any of them. But um, to, to that's me, me and you were awesome on email. We respond quickly. <laughs> you guys were on it. I looked up and said you had 25 Listen, new emails. I'll be honest with you, man. No matter what I put our our company attached to, whether it be a thousand cigars or a hundred thousand cigars or even if it is a hat, and I mean this, if our name is attached to it, I put everything into it because that's an extension of our brand. And I'm not Absolutely. joking. You, could, you can ask my wife. She will tell you how obsessed I am. I bring home merchandise or apparel, and I, I make her try on a hat, and I go, wait, does this fit your head because you have a smaller head? She's like, what are you getting on? I said, she's like, it's just another hat. I'm like, no, it's not. It's every little thing you do adds up to the big, the big billboard, man. And you just you can't. Even a business card, whatever it is, website, everything is a representation of what you do. So you've got to always be on top of the game, period. Whether it's a hat, a cigar band, a blend, a limited edition, a core line, whatever it is. That's my philosophy. That's the way I feel about it. No, that's – and we appreciate I mean, <clears throat> we appreciate it. I know I appreciate it. Um, and that's a good way to, to really attack anything you do in your life. Um, sure. It's good advice. Last uh, minute, Rob. Oh, we're last minute? Okay, well, I'm going to ask this one question because I actually want to know the answer. Uh, this is from Jim. I'm not even going to try to say your last name. I'll say Jim V. Uh, it says, are there any plans to incorporate a Lancero as a regular release in any of your lines? Not at this time, no. Um, we did Drumstick because it made sense. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously because of, if you know anything about the branding behind Headley Grange and, you know, when the levee breaks, and to this day I probably can't hear that song because I've, completely fried my mind on that drum beat. <laughs> um, but if you know anything about it, you'll know why Drumstick, the Lancero, made sense to it. Um, in terms of a regular production, it's like a lot of people will ask you, why don't you put a, a Lancero in a regular production? Because they don't sell, people don't buy them. They don't um, sell, bro. They just don't. They don't, unfortunately. And, you know, you know there, there are certain things you want to do because you love to do it, but you also have to be able to pay bills. You have to support mm -hmm. families. You have to make this a financially viable business. And... It's just, you know, and again, another, another reason is that it's hard to roll. It's a very difficult cigar to get any kind of production out of. It can get maybe 150, 175 Lanceros a day at uh, Tabacalera La Alianza. So it's just not really, doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, I think I like, for instance, like what Pete's doing with, you know, he had all of the different blends in a Lancero, Vitola in, a, in that format. Mm -hmm. uh, make it available. You know, I can see that, but I, I wouldn't put a Lancero into regular production. It just doesn't make sense for us right now. Okay. No, that's uh, a. <clears throat> I, I shed a little tear there, but um, you know, if you got to do what's right for uh, for your business, John, we uh, we are uh, we're out of time. So already, that yeah, was it. We're, we're I told you we wouldn't talk about anything in particular. We had like four <laughs> questions, and then it was like, tell us about the regular production line. I can't tell you anything about it. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Adios, good night. Dude, you were so right. That's all right. Yeah, literally, four questions. That was we, it. We got, we, got through, we got through a handful of them. We'll stick around a little bit uh, after the AFRM broadcast here. But, uh, again, uh, John, we appreciate you coming out. We appreciate you working with us on the Texacali. We're excited about it. Um, real quick, let everybody know uh, where they can find you uh, online. You guys are active, social. Uh, let yeah. everybody know where you're at. Um, they can find us online at crownedheads.com. They can find us on Twitter at thecrownedheads.com. Not because we're like you know full of ourselves, but because there's some band that is called Crowned Heads, and they sign on to Twitter and they've tweeted like six things and they they maintain Crowned Heads on who they are. So we're at the Crowned Heads, at Mike Condor. Facebook, I don't know how to find us on Facebook because I hate Facebook. Um, so if you're sending, I don't even think you guys have a Facebook. Page. We do. Have a we do. It's, it's the crown heads. Yeah. 
Is it? Okay, because I've never seen our Facebook page, I'm being honest with you. So uh, we do have an Instagram account. Um, I know Gogo does that, and that's uh, Instagram, whatever, slash <laughs> the crowned heads. Correct. Um, so, yeah. But it, as for me, I, I do all the, the crowned heads thing. So if you're trying to send me a message, I will reply to you, I promise. Um, but uh, don't try to find me on Facebook because I think it's evil. <laughs> cool, John. We appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the support of the show. Uh, thanks for everything you're doing out there in the world to keep us safe. We appreciate you guys Absolutely. tuning in and everything that you guys Definitely. do for us. Um, it's uh, We'll be back with you guys next week. Uh, with uh, I'm not sure who our guest is Victor next Victor Vitale. With uh, Victor Vitale. So tune in and check that one out. That'll be a good time. Uh, guys, we appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. And uh, stay am safe. I, am I excused? Do I go? Or? No, you stay. We I got, stay? We have the After Dark segment coming up. What does that mean? Just, just, give, just give me five seconds of silence. Right now? Yeah. Starting when? <laughs> now. <laughs> That's good enough. And we're back, fuckers. Yeah. Jesus. Now you it's know. now it's the. Uh, it's, so now it's, we can cuss and swear and everything. We can like, do whatever we want. Yeah. Now you can say exactly what you think about. We can say piss and shit and fuck and all that stuff. Cock mm -hmm. balls, motherfucker. Hideout's the fucking best shit ever. So is anybody watching this at this point? Uh, yeah, like we're still people. live on Cigar Federation. Oh, okay. All right. Great. So, we never went away. They get to see all the you know five seconds of silence and all that. Oh, stuff. brilliant. Fuck. Yeah, but when we cut it out, it's just easier for. Us to cut it out because. All right, so we get more questions. What's the deal? What do we do? Well, we're gonna do the giveaways. Let's do Correct. the giveaways. Uh, did how did the uh, Twitter thing go? Did you did we get to where we needed to get to? Let's take a look, shall we? Let's. Do um, it. we can, but um, I have a feeling you know, we're gonna be slightly disappointed. I probably am. Um, let's see. I got a lot of notifications. Let me ask you guys this. You guys seem to be very social media savvy. What does that mean when somebody favorites your tweet? Like continually. What does that mean? So it just what do they deal with it? What, what does basically that mean? it just it's like think of it like a bookmark. Okay. And then what you can do is if you're on your face or on your Twitter account, if you oh, go to okay. like your page or whatever, you can say tweets, blah blah blah. If you go down to favorites, you can do it to see basically everything you favorited. So it's a way to just to kind of because I mean obviously I think like a fucking billion tweets happen a day or something crazy. It's a way for people to okay. uh, go back and check. Go it back out. and check exactly. All right, so nobody's getting the Las Calaveras three-pack thing because I think, as you can see, where are through. I mean, we got one. So three you're saying there's a chance, John. You're saying there's a there chance. You there you go, exactly. I think the problem is everybody already follows you. I, yeah, you know. I think the market's maybe. pretty well saturated on your Twitter account. So. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, it was worth a shot. So. No, yeah, was, that was that was worth a shot. It's too bad because those are. Uh, maybe Mike Condor picked up a few followers. Then it would it would be all worthwhile. We need to stick with that that the hashtag can, follow Mike. We pushed that for a while. I did. Might do that. Might do that. We pushed it for a while, and then we uh, and then we got away from it. So okay, so we've got we've got three uh, six shooter samplers, and we got mm -hmm. three hats. Mm -hmm. So Logan, are we gonna pick? Are we gonna pick three winners or six? Is this coming to me or is this coming to you, bro? Uh, I don't know. Bro, oh, as in you or me? No, I'm I'm not picking up on that. No, no, no. I mean, have, have you? When you're you're sending the prizes to me or to are you to shipping them out correct, John? I'm sending them to Rob because if it has to go to APO address, it is a, the, for whatever reason it's a real it's hard. For, I don't know why they give us such a hard time. And like Canada, oh man, I felt bad. Like I asked Adam to send something to Canada, and it was like he had to take blood from him or something. Now I got a guy <laughs> that I picked as, as <laughs> on a Twitter contest, and I'm like, great, all I need is your address. I'll send you the hat. Where, my freaking luck, man. The guy lives in Finland. I'm like, <laughs> I said, all right, that's cool. I said, I told Adam, I said, hey, we got to send a hat to somebody in Finland. He's like, good luck with that. <laughs> He's like, $75 in shipping. They don't make it easy, man. Freaking, it's just I'm trying to send a damn, you know, whatever. So, so Logan, it looks like I'm going to ship them out. So let's do. Uh, okay. Let's let's pick three winners. Then. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it a little more streamlined here. Like, let's just pick people, because I don't want them to have to email me and shit, because, I mean, they can email me, and I'll collect addresses, that's fine, but... That's perfect. Okay. I, I so, love having you filter all that stuff. Yeah. So... Thanks, Great. Well, how do you want to do it? I don't care. I told you, I gave you the warning. God damn it, Rob. An hour ago, I said... People are actually, are actually watching this happen right now. Okay. This, <laughs> this fucking shit show. All right, then, here we go. Done. I'm doing it. 
Okay. Here we go. Just email me, Logan at CigarFederation.com, with the subject line, Crown Heads, include your full name, your address, zip code, city, state, and the first three people. We're going to do three packages because that's just easier. First three people to email? No. No, you don't want to do that? No, do, do something better like that. Like, <laughs> include like a saucy picture or something, you know? Okay, <laughs> then, okay, I got it. Then first people to email me with their name, crown heads, like this before, but you and the best answers will win. What was the question? You yeah, froze up on my hand. Yeah, mine too. It said, what does John Huber's hair look like? Oh, that's good. There that's you good. go. Yeah, if, if anybody comes up with what Logan said before we You're run, automatically they winning. They should win something special. <clears throat> so I, I, we, now I'm curious. I want to hear what the answers are going to be. This oh, well, Logan will read them. We've done. Uh, well, oh, good. We did, uh, we did Logan's. Uh, Lo Logan, because lovely Logna is Logan's uh, stripper alter ego, oh. and so we had. Uh, you know what was what was his theme music? Um, <laughs> We had, uh, like, make a list of everything that Rob is horrible at. That was a fun day. I liked that one. And they said, one person said everything, and I yeah. laughed hysterically. Yeah, wow. and that person won. It was, wow. it was a big ego boost for me. Um, so we've got, uh, we got a few minutes while people are emailing that. Um, let me just scroll through some of these questions if there's ever anything, uh, if there's anything that I want to, um, to, touch, to touch on here that we haven't touched on. Um... <laughs> I like this question from Joe Cans, and it makes me laugh because John, I know you a little bit. <laughs> question one: What does your marketing budget look like? <laughs> you see my hair? I can't afford a damn haircut. My wife yeah, cuts nah. me twice a year, so um, my uh, ad budget looks like. Let me see. Can I there like that? It's <laughs> a big fat zero. <laughs> that's, that's my marketing budget. So if you think I'm I'm a marketing machine. Got another thing coming, son. No, there's there's no money. Listen, I've we have yet to take a page out in the magazine. We have yet to, you know, do any kind of formalized advertising. We do social media because uh, the price is right. Actually, um, it's free, and um, just you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in sampling the product. Um, Pete Pete was giving me a hard time. We were at the factory together in January. He's like, you can't, you're giving away all your samples. You can't give away your samples. I said, that's easy for you to say because you're like, you know. King Turtle Shit Mountain, and you're like, you know, uh, the best boutique brand in the world. Right now, we're just trying to get a, get on the mountain. So I have to sample the product, and that to me is the best form of advertising and sampling and letting people try it for themselves. So I don't have a marketing budget. So that's what my budget <laughs> looks like. No, no, was, I, I knew the answer. That's why I wanted to ask the question. <laughs> Follow up question, though, and this is this is interesting. Says, what do you feel is the single most important behind the scenes function you perform in order for your company to be successful? I feel like a job interview, but it's an interesting question. The most uh, being a good husband <laughs> and a good father. Because if I can keep peace in my household, uh, this is a, there's that's a transfer. If I can keep peace in my household, keep my wife happy, look after my son, um, then. I have a happy house, and if I have a happy house, I have a happy mind, and I'm clear, and I can focus on doing everything else that comes along afterwards. So behind the scenes, that's – and, you know, quite honestly, that's my real – you know, if I have a real job or a role in this world, that's my real job, man, is to be – Oh, that was hilarious. What? Dude. Logan's reading some of the answers. this isn't a winner, I don't know what is. Oh, here Before we, go. we get into that, I got oh, one more God, question. That was one more epic. question from Harley Holmes, and he's and I'm not I don't know what the road show is, but he says, Will we have a West Coast road show? First of all, I need to know is Harley Holmes a porn star? I it don't sounds, know. That's, sounds like, that's a great name, man. Well, he's he's from Southern California, I think. <laughs> Encino by any chance? I'm they a, do a lot of that down there from what yeah. I understand. Um, will there be a road show yes, absolutely, Harley. There will be a road show. It, you know, right now, um, Really, all we have as far as brand ambassador, excuse me, is Wes. I don't know if you guys know Wes Thornton, but you can also follow him at Cigar Wes. I think Twitter. You're laughing over there. You're, you're having a good time with those uh, those Dude, jokes, aren't you? Oh, this man. one is Dude, this is epic. Epic shit, man. Oh, I didn't know this that, bro. All right, I had a feeling. But anyway, um, so we're trying to get Wes out there as much as possible. I mean, he's you know just really busting it. He was in like D.C., Baltimore last week. He's in Wichita right now. 
Um, he's been to Florida three times this year. He's been to Arizona. I mean, he's hopping everywhere. The guy, the guy's literally on the road like probably five out of six weeks. Um, so we'll we'll get out there sooner or later, definitely. And uh, Harley Holmes, uh, this, I, I know this, and I don't know why I didn't say it, but Harley is the name of his dog. And cool he name. Isn't, cool dog. He isn't what kind of dog? Yeah. Boxer. Even cooler. He's got a boxer yeah. just like me. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm, a I'm a dog nut. I love dogs. Harley. You have dogs? Oh yeah, man. What kind? I wanted to bring my dog on the show, but my wife said she didn't. She didn't want to do that. She wanted to keep it private. She says, like, "Can you not display everything in our life?" <laughs> Like it's, 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 this isn't like TMZ. It's not like you know nobody's gonna try to like you know <laughs> the paparazzi's not gonna try to. Uh, I, our dog is uh, I will tell you is a little rescue. Her name is Flower. She's a tiny little I guess I don't know what you would call her. She's an East Nashville rescue. Uh, we took her in about three years ago. And the funny story, real quick, is when we bought the house that we're in now, we bought it because we wanted land because we were gonna get a large dog, specifically a Newfoundland. Oh, wow. That was, okay. That's what we wanted. So we ended up with a house with 2.3 acres. And instead of getting a Newfoundland, we got flour. She is about 11 pounds. She's a little tiny. <laughs> so, but she's a doll. She's, she's my little girl. Flower, that reminds me of uh, <clears throat> um, Bambi. Didn't he call? That's, that's what she's named what? after. Uh, skunk. There you go. Skunk, because when we got her, her whole, you know, she, was a, she was a mess, and her digestive system was all messed up, and she had a little problem with, you know, being kind of skunk-like, if you will. So my wife named her Flower, and it just stuck. So that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. We uh, we've got uh, before Logan gets on, we've got two dogs. I got the Boxer. I show him all the time on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, we also have a. He's, just uh, having, he's having a ball over there. Uh, we're, we're gonna we'll get to it. But right. I just want to say we've got another dog. Uh, she's a, a, a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel, oh. so, like Lady from Lady and the Tramp. She's about 17 pounds. My wife had one of those when she was a little girl. Yeah. Good yeah. Lord, man. You're having a – all right. Oh, yeah. shit, man. So it's and her name's Ruby, and today is her ninth birthday. And that's Tell it. Ruby that's all I want to say. It's, it's Ruby's birthday, She and I told her she didn't care. And but, you know uh, what? Hashtag Ruby Tuesday. Cause it's yeah. Tuesday. That's, yeah. That's actually her name. Her name is actually Ruby Tuesday. Ruby Tuesday. Yeah, it's not named after the the, the hamburgers. No, the stones. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, okay, Logan, go. All right, Logan, here we go. Here we go. This dark. one. Uh, yeah. This one's epic. This one is epic. From Carl <laughs> Sherman. John's hair looks like the hair hanging over a labradoodle's ass. <laughs> Dude, that's a All winner. Right. I don't care. Anyways, uh, yeah. I, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm making it. I'm googling on my phone over here to Labradoodle's ass. Dude, I have a Labradoodle, bro. Really? Does and my it, hair look it, like his ass? Because his hair is all kind of curly and wavy, and it comes over his ass, and he shits all over it when you he know shits. What? I should have just kept the hat on. All right, what's the next one? All right, <laughs> the next one is this one's pretty epic too. From Jason Hill, his hair looks like a cross between Lloyd Christmas and Hel Helen Keller. <laughs> Lloyd Christmas. Who's Lloyd Christmas? From Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber, dude. Oh, well, all right. And Helen Keller, what does her hair look like? I don't know, because she I just couldn't see. I thought she was blind. She was right. blind, so she couldn't right. see her hair, dude. Okay, that one's not winning. Yeah, that's so good. No. All right, let Go. me see what else here. Uh, people keep saying Johnny Depp. Hmm. Um, no, but that would be epic. That would. I would be, not. That's not no, epic. No, you can't say Johnny Depp because let's let's go with the Labradoodle's ass. Dude, that, that one's a winner. That, that one's a winner. Yeah. You got to know your audience. Right. He definitely follows David. On David Merchant. It looks like Edward Scissorhands went fucking crazy on your do, bro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a winner. That's good. David. David Merchant. All right, David. And then yeah, let me find the last one here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. There's so many good ones. Okay, you Johnny Depp. No. Depp. No. No. No, let me no, see. Here. That, no, that would be no, no, no. It says no, that's not good. No. Shaggy on Scooby Doo. No. no. <laughs> business on the top. Okay, business on the top and business on the sides. None of that mullet shit. I, I don't have a mullet. I don't have any like. John's hair is stuck in the '90s. He stopped giving a shit when he started smoking cigars. True. Whoever said that just. Go ahead and sign him up right now for a freebie or something. That's All right. a hey, you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. Is that a winner? 
That's a winner. That sounds yeah. like a winner to me, yeah. That's exactly, I mean, literally, I like let my wife whack at it for, you know, my hair, by the way, whack at it for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm once sorry. Every, literally, like. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, once every, uh, I don't know, four or five months. She does a good job, actually. I stopped, stopped paying people to cut my hair. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, save money from the marketing yes. budget. So yeah, our winner is just zero. Which is zero dollars. Uh, we got Chris Bros, big winner. Yeah. And then we've also got Rich Sherman, which your answer was epic, and David Merchant. Congratulations, freaking lations. Thank you guys. Appreciate. Oh, those it. are all. Those are all. Those guys are also all new winners too. I think. Pretty much. Yeah. That's good. Fantastic. Cool. So, uh, anything else we want to cover before we're done? It's up to you guys. Uh, I'm in your world just trying to live in it, so uh, what do you guys want to talk about? Logan, you got anything else? Oh, my God. John Terra looks like he had a transplant in the 90s comic, Emo Phillips, but on the way to his head, it got ran over by a coked-out Robin Williams in a Speedo. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who said that? Brandon Luna. All right. you guys, Make it four. I'll send four samplers and four ads because that was... That's another winner. That's good. Who was man. the first person? What was the first name that he mentioned? Uh, Emo Phillips. Blah blah blah. I don't know who blah, that blah, is. Blah, blah. I don't know, but it was just. I'll have to look it up. That's good. Yeah. I like that. That was talented. All right. All right, so we got four winners. Respect. You read the last couple here. Lucy from Charlie Brown. No, dude, you're not gonna win anything. Um, let me see here. <laughs> John, I don't even know who this is. Turito's evil twin. John Turito's. John Turturro. Yeah. He was. Uh, he's been. In, you know who he is. He's been in a lot. I know of John Turturro. He's a good actor. Um, yeah. He has no hair though. No, he's got like short curly hair. Yeah, that one's. I, I always remember him from Rounders. He was Kanish in Rounders. Oh yeah, it's a good movie. He's been in a bunch of stuff actually. Yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's good. Well, winners are done. Congratulations. All right. All right. All right. Well, let's. I mean, it's, we've had uh, we've had you here, John, for about an hour, so we'll wrap it up. Um, you know, well, as always, we uh, we already wrapped it up, but we do appreciate your support. We're really, really, really excited about the Texacali. So, guys, like we said, a lot more information coming in the uh, in the future. Um, looking for at a September release, and uh, cool. that's really all we know at this point. That's all we'll keep, uh, knows, really. Yeah, that's all anybody knows exactly. That's so all that. anybody knows. That's all that uh, exists. So that's all anybody knows except that my hair looks like a Labrador's ass. <laughs> it does, man, and I have a Labrador. Yeah. I'll show you pictures of Truman tomorrow, John. Awesome! I'm looking forward to it. I know. It'll be a good time. I have that. Be there at eleven. I thought it was eleven thirty. I might just get there quicker so we can hang out more. No, it's probably eleven thirty. Hopefully, I didn't. I didn't get to the office like twelve thirty today. You right. want to hear about my day? How much time do we have? That's we have. We got a few whatever. minutes. We have a few minutes. No. So I, I'm. First of all, I'm taking care of, of the whole house because my wife is, is with my brother-in-law in Virginia and helping him decorate his house to get it to market and everything. So she's like, if you ever watch like HGTV, oh, yeah. you know, my wife is like that. She can turn anything into looking like it came out of a magazine. So she's brilliant on that. So I'm by myself, long story short. So I'm racing to work. I'm trying to get to work on time. I'm on the phone with her, and I hear bum, 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 bum. She's like, what's the matter? I said, the car's making a really funny noise. And she said, oh, no, great. That's all we need because I'm thinking the car's breaking down. So then it, then it goes away. Then I'm on the freeway or the interstate, whatever you want to call it, and the noise starts again. And then the car's not accelerating, and I don't know what's going on. So I pull off. I get off the road. I get into a gas station. I pop the hood. I smell burning. I, you know, I don't know what's going on. Check the oil, plenty of oil. Turn the engine on. Running fine. I have no idea what's going on. So I get in the car. Here comes the booming again. Bump, 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 bump. So I come to a light, and this guy pulls up next to me, looks over at me, and he's like in horror, like shock. And I'm like, "What is the matter?" I roll down the window. I'm like, "What?" And he goes, uh, "He goes, oh my God, your tire is shredded, man. It is shredded." <laughs> and I was like, "So come to find out, the the on the passenger side in the back, I mean, it you could see the steel belt on the tire. It is just like." I, it never dawned on me that the, the noise was made by a tire. So, in my long-winded way of saying that was my morning this morning, so I had to get towed. Thank you, AAA, to a tire store, get a new tire, and then I got into work, and you know, here I am. So, hopefully tomorrow will go a little smoother. Is that boring or what? Anyway, <laughs> you had a rough day, bro. I did a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. That's what it is. 
And then I capped it off with a bunch of insults about my hair. <laughs> hey, man. You didn't even read, like, the nice stuff. Oh, uh, Dude, you know. there was nothing nice. Was, yeah, I'm just the nice <laughs> thing was that you look like Johnny Depp. Well, you could have read that. I did. I said everyone kept saying it, and I said, that yeah. sucks. That's not good enough an insult. So, and I, next next show you should do, like, the beard thing, man. Find out what does Logan's beard look like. What's living in it? That's what I want to know. It's what's, like, what resides in Logan's beard? It's like that Family Guy episode where he had the uh, the birds, the, dude, the endangered birds living in his beard, so he couldn't shave. That's, I'll, I'll be honest, with you, man. I, I like the beard. If I could grow I a beard, do. I would, but I can't. I don't have the testosterone that you 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 have. Those young bucks have. No, I just have nothing. It's, this is it, man. I get like this is about as as good as I can get, and then I get like three whiskers like a gypsy that just grow <laughs> out of here. Like you know what I mean? Like, without the mole, but they just, like, grow, like, three whiskers like this, and you look like some gypsy lady, like, telling fortunes <laughs> in a tent somewhere. And that's that's kind of my facial that's, hair that's, dilemma. That's a good look. So, that's, yeah. That's a good yeah. look. All right, boys. I'm going to go yeah. call my wife. And, yeah, uh, let's wrap it up. Um, John, yeah. we appreciate it as always. Um, Thank we'll, you. Uh, appreciate I'm it. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have you on again as we get, uh, you know, closer with the uh, – with the Texacali, and we will uh, definitely see you at IPCPR. I know Logan's going to be hanging out with you for the next few days. Um, a few so, days? Uh, what, is he moving in? He just said he's coming over for a cigar. That's tomorrow. what I heard. Just that's tomorrow. what I heard. Just what tomorrow. Is, he's a, you bring a knapsack, a little spend-over bag, footy pajamas? I'll bring, like, a fanny pack. He's nope. going to show up with one of those sticks with the you know bag tied to the end of it. Like he's just, like, the, the old, you know, walking around. Oh, like, hey, man, just, if I have to. John's office out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. I mean, oh. Yeah, well, yeah, anyway. It is. Uh, it is for now. Yeah. More to come. Yes, part two. All right, I'm out. All right, All right guys. guys. We appreciate Thank it. You guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate for, y'all. Uh, we'll talk soon. Logan, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right, brothers. All right, All right guys. guys. Thanks Have for the support. Night. We'll see you night. next week. Uh, next, what are we, next Thursday, Logan? Next Thursday. With, uh, with Victor Vitale. Thanks, guys. Take care.